Howdy everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft video with me, your host, Koto Kusumoto. So I found this seed that I actually posted on Twitter, and it's going to be posted in the description as well, that is one of the most interesting seeds I've seen in the snapshot yet, and it includes a sunken ship that's actually beached. It's actually stranded under an island, and I thought, you know, I want to make this a player home, but I want to show you guys how I do it, and maybe you can get some inspiration from it as well. So we're going to be excavating this and turning it into our own player home, so... Let's get started. This is going to be a lot of fun. So here we are at the future home of our new player base. And as you can see, it doesn't look like much just yet. We've got some icebergs in the background. This is a really, really neat seed, by the way, because you've got your icebergs over there. You've got a really cool looking mountain. You've got a birch forest and then there's a dark oak forest just right over there. You've got, of course, the sunken ship. And you've got these little islands here, so that is actually going to be a sugarcane farm when I get all said and done with it over there. So yeah, there's our dark oak, there's our birds. So we've got a lot of materials around here. We have turtles, we have fish, we have sand, we have clay. We have this little island that has a bunch of trees on it that is going to become our main base of operations. We have some floating trees there because the 19... Oh, four, five, a whatever it is, snapshot is kind of glitchy in some cases. <laughs> you've got kelp. I mean, you've got everything you could possibly want here. So once again, we're right on the edge of one, two, three, four biomes. Really good place to be. But this is the crown jewel. We need to dig all of this out and make it our own player base. And we're going to do that. And we even have a spot over here where we can sort of wall this off. No iron required. And we can make a farming area once we get rid of these trees. We can have a farming area here. We can have trees and our base right next to each other in this cool biome. So, But first, as you can see, I'm a little low on material. So we need to go actually go do a quick run to get some more cobblestone. And we're going to get some wood off this island. So we're going to get all these trees knocked down. Leaving these, because this is part of the ship. And then we're going to come back and start excavating hardcore so let's go get some materials and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes now that we're armed with some basic resources a whole lot of shovels so that's what we're gonna need and we've cleared off our island a little bit with all the trees to get us some wood and of course we've gone over there to get some cobblestone coal and a little bit of surface iron we are ready to actually start our build proper however since it's night we're gonna sleep first so i'll see you all in the morning where we actually start digging out this behemoth of a ship the really nice thing about this project is you don't need high-end tools to actually do all this. Cobble tools will work just fine. So stone shovels, stone picks, stone axes. You don't need iron. You don't need diamond. You don't need any of that. This is supposed to be a starter base, but honestly, once you get done with it, you might want to just keep it for the remainder of your playthrough because it is such a cool little home that you can make out of this uh, beach ship. And you can expand it, too, because, I mean, you've got room here on your island, of course, and then you've got room over on this neighboring island, which, like I said, is going to turn into a sugarcane farm, which is a really slick little sugarcane farm. I don't think I've actually seen anyone really do all that much yet, but we'll show you how to do that in just a second here. But first, we've got to get rid of all this dirt and sand, which means we're probably going to go through about three shovels just doing that. So have plenty of shovels on you when you start doing this. Because otherwise you're going to be sitting here making shovels over and over and over again. And that gets old real fast. With our island level off and taking a few minutes to just sort of fill this in and make a very basic rudimentary wheat farm, which we'll harvest as soon as it goes over there and replant, we now have... Ooh, fish. Hello, fish. We now have an area where we can feel fairly comfortable about starting our base and getting started on excavating this. So this is going to be the big part of the project, is actually digging out this ship. Because if you notice, most of it is under the island here. However, you come down this direction, you can see part of it does stick out into this little bay here. So water infiltration is going to be an issue as soon as we start digging down. However, the good news is the front part of the boat does not stick out. So the front part all the way back to most of the stern will not be an issue with water getting in, but it's just when you get over there, you're going to start having problems. But for the rest of this, for the ship proper, it's actually going to be fairly simple, just fairly time consuming. So let's make some more shovels and get to it. 
And the way I would suggest doing this is actually going out six blocks on either side of the masts, uh, if where possible. Now, obviously, it's not going to be possible over here. But so go six in one direction and then six in the other. You should see I've gone a little bit further this way just simply because I want to get this wall here to not infiltrate as far as water goes, but then go six blocks in this direction, six blocks in that direction. That should give you a pretty good outline of the ship itself to start with. And I would only go a few blocks back of the stern mast and then as far uh, to the north of the foremast. Is that what that's called? I guess so. <laughs> For aft, so aft mast, foremast. There we go, yes. So until you can actually find the front of the ship, which is right there, as you can see. So we've actually found the front of the ship and we can now use that. Oops, sorry. And we can now use that. I'm not used to spectator mode, as you may be able to tell. <laughs> we can use that as sort of a landmark for the rest of the ship. So we know the front's there and the ship is about 10 to 12 blocks wide. So about six blocks on either side should give us a good outline for the ship itself. So let's get back to it. So five stone shovels, five stone pickaxes, innumerable waterlogged slab infiltrations, and one Minecraft day later, we have our boat mostly excavated, and we can now start enjoying the spoils of what's on board. So let's go see what we've got from excavating this mess. Chest number one has some coal carrots. Hey, that actually might come in handy. And some Prop 3 pants. Well, considering I had no armor anyway, let's let's grab those. <laughs> because I haven't found iron yet. That was a good chest. Let's go with chest number two. Ooh, compass. Got some paper. We got some books. That'll come in handy. And a buried treasure map, as always. And we'll take the chest while we're at it. Because why make the thing twice? And then upstairs, chest number three. Oh, pretty. We've got some emeralds. We've got some lapis. We've got some iron. Yay! And some iron nuggets. Fantastic. I am feeling better about life. I don't know about you. And since we have a handy boat here, in addition to our boat home, and this is actually very close, we can just go ahead and take this little river over this way and go find this buried treasure while we are at it. But first, to stop at the Drowned Hut. Because that never ends badly for me. Hello. You can go away now. Thank you. And we'll take this mossy cobblestone while we're at it. Because mossy cobblestone, especially for a sunken ship build, I think mossy cobblestone would look really, really good. And it makes sense. So let's grab as much of that as we can while we're here. Cool as mossy cobblestone is, though, that's not why we stopped here. We stopped here for this stuff. We got some wheat. We got some more rotten flesh and coal, and another buried treasure map that more than likely takes us to the exact same spot. Well, maybe we did stop for the mossy cobblestone after all. Have I mentioned how cool the seed is? By the way, <laughs> it's just such a neat seed that we've got on this particular one because you've got the the icebergs and the ocean and the dark oak and the birch and the sunken ship that's actually a, a beached ship and it's just this seed is really really neat and the mountains with the spruce biome over there so it's it's this is a neat place this is one of those that i may revisit once one about one four goes live to see if it still looks like this and if so i'm gonna make this my main survival world because this place is just awesome all right let's take up this treasure and finally, all right, iron, that I want it, that I want, that I want, all this, the diamond, yes, the heart of the sea, I'll take all of it, yes, huzzah, Surf, surface, 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 okay. Now that we've returned with our ill-gotten gains from our treasure map and we're wearing fabulous pants, how fabulous are those, glowy leather pants, <laughs> I can, I can think of about 12 different uh, goth clubs where you could walk in wearing these and like be the talk of the club all night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now that we've gotten all of that, now that we actually have some carrots planted, we've got some wheat growing back here, we've got our ship mostly excavated except for this area up here, what we're going to want to do is take some of that iron we got and make a bucket so we can actually sump out most of that 
And then we're going to sort of spruce this up a little bit around here to make it look a little bit better. But to do that, I've got to go back into another world where I've already done all of that just to show you the completed product. So after excavating the ship, getting everything set to go, this is what we've got as pretty much a final product for our player base. As you notice, we've actually excavated out the back all the way with a whole lot of <laughs> bucket sumping. We've actually gotten rid of all of these waterlogged stairs and slabs and fence posts and replaced everything with glass. Now, the glass actually is easy to come by because there's a ton of sand right along in here that you're going to get as you excavate anyway. So you'll be able to basically have all of the sand you need to make all of this glass. Plus the fact that even if you aren't able to find a lot of coal, which you can find over in those mountains over there, you can grow so many trees that you can create basically unlimited amounts of charcoal if you really, really have to do that. As you can see, we've sort of got a fenced off area that goes into a staircase that leads down onto the boat. And I sort of filled in this area rather than having the trapdoor areas where it goes into the hold. I've put some of the slabs I found around here from the jungle slabs and basically replaced all of that so it's got one solid deck here. I've kept the masts as they appeared because I thought that had like a nice dilapidated kind of broken down look that I wanted anyway. And if you notice, only half the ship over here has actually, I guess, rendered. <laughs> it's, it's only been built by about half. So it's got a really nice broken down look that it looks like it's almost like Swiss Family Robinson. You've come across this thing and you've turned it into your very own home. So we've got our field of weed up here. We've got some carrots growing over here. We have some melons growing and you wonder where did I get the melons? Well, if you come downstairs with me, you'll see exactly where I got the melons because if you go into the ship proper itself, you'll see that I've got a mine that goes down into an abandoned mine shaft that you actually find in here. So I did a little bit of exploration in there and got some melon seeds and a few other things. And there's a lot of lava down here, so be very careful. <laughs> lava, mobs, spider spawner, you know, all those little things that you're going to find in a typical cave system. Ooh, there's a chest over there I didn't get. Eh, we'll get it later. So it's a really, really neat seed in general because you've got the mine shaft right under your sunken ship, which is just awesome, I think. Inside, we've sort of decorated with lamps because I thought lamps would look good in here. I do have another portal, so I could get glowstone, but I thought the lamps actually made it look a lot more rustic and a lot more believable. Downstairs, we've sort of hollowed this out a little bit, and we've turned this into our main workroom. So we've got our chests, we've got our crafting table, we've got a couple of furnaces. Nothing automated yet, just simply because there's not a lot of space in here. But you've got a lot of room for just a normal chest storage area. You don't necessarily need to have it automated right away since this is supposed to be a starter base and I'm using air quotes for that. And then upstairs we've actually turned this top deck into just sort of an observation platform. The glass around here looks really cool so you can actually look out into the ocean from here. I'm going to do something with the floor in here. I, As soon as I get silk touch more than likely what I'm going to do is just bring grass down because this is going to be our holding pin for our cows that we found and sheep and pigs and whatever else we want. So this is sort of gonna be the livestock area on this side. So we'll probably remove all of this and put in grass. We have moved our campfire down here with a hay block above it. So it actually gives off a pretty good smoke signal. So even if I'm not in debug mode, I can figure out where my base is. And then in here, we've got a very simple bedroom that we're starting to put together with some more lanterns. We've used some of the stone blocks that we found in the drowned hut there. And of course, we've got one little window looking out into the ocean beyond. And then we're going to put some more lanterns in here too. So the imagine all the torches are going to be lanterns at some point as soon as I find some more iron and just get that taken care of. But that is our player home. And I really, really enjoy this. It was a, it was a lot of fun to actually do all of this, especially in survival. I mean, I know you could pretty much say, well, hey, Akoto, you could do this in creative so much faster. Well, you could, but you wouldn't have the same feeling of accomplishment by getting all this taken care of, I don't think. so. And while you could put in the mossy stairs, I chose the dark oak stairs just because I had a bunch of them left over after sort of, you know, doing a little bit of work on the ship itself. So I decided, eh, dark oak stairs look good. So we did that up here. Uh, and then over here, we have my sugarcane island, which as you can see is basically three two rectangles and then something in the center here so it's very very efficient very easy to harvest even though it's not automated so it's it's i like that a lot i like the way that turned out but yeah that is our base
and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I'm so I was so jazzed to find this too in this seed. So it, it looks so neat. I really like the sunken ships that they added in 1.13. And I really like when they do things like this, where you've got a little island with a sunken ship on it. I think that's really, really cool. So I was really happy to find this. It was a lot of fun to actually put this together to make this actually into a player base. And like I said, I'm going to do some more work on it. We'll add in some more lighting, some different lighting, so take out the torches and put in lanterns and things like that. And then, of course, expand on this area a little bit more. So we've got our, our wheat field, we've got our carrots and melons. I want to find pumpkins. I want to get a chicken hopper going. You know, all the different things you normally do in a regular survival playthrough I want to do with this. But this was just so cool. I, I just had to, I had to... I had to do something with it. I had to do it. It was so... It was so neat. It, it just... It had to be done. <laughs> it had to be done. So, But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this gave you some inspiration for your world. I typically put out content on this channel about three to five days a week. Right now I'm in a very Minecraft kind of mood, so I'm doing a lot of that. However, I do play a lot of other games as well. I play a lot of AAA games. I play a lot of shooters. I play a lot of sandbox and open world games. Uh, everything from Fallout to No Man's Sky to Battlefield to everything else. Uh, Vermintide, all sorts of different games. So even if Minecraft isn't your cup of tea, I'm certain to find something that you'll like sooner or later that I'll hit upon. I also live stream on Twitch four days a week, typically Monday through Thursday, and then Sundays is a subscriber day where I play with subs and mods. This week's a little bit different. I'm doing Tuesday through Friday instead because of reasons. Um, so by all means, please stop by my channel if you'd care to. We, we're going to be playing Minecraft. We're going to be playing some more Fallout, New Vegas. We're going to be doing all sorts of things. So by all means, come by, say hello, hang out, have fun, get to know the community. Join the Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube here. If you really like the content, please consider subscribing because I really enjoy putting out this stuff and I enjoy uh, making content. So definitely... Stick around if you enjoyed it, and if you are a Minecraft addict like I am. <laughs> but whatever you do tonight, make sure you go out tonight, play some games, have some fun. We'll see you again soon. Have a good evening, everyone.